In this video, we're going to talk about beta and how it can be used to measure systematic risk. So let's say you were thinking of investing in eBay and you want to know the total risk associated with eBay stock, right? So you could go and you could calculate the standard deviation of eBay's returns, right? That's its volatility. And that's going to tell you the total risk, right? But that's, you got to remember that the total risk has two components. It's got the unsystematic risk. That's firm specific, right? That's something maybe eBay CEO gets fired or some news in the market that has just to do with eBay. Now, also, eBay could be affected by systematic risk, which is market-wide conditions, right? The, the Federal Reserve in the U.S. decides to cut interest rates. That's, that's market risk that's going to affect eBay, right? So we talked about in previous videos that unsystematic risk is diversified away, right? When you hold a number of firm stock, not just eBay, but you also have Let's say Amazon, you've got Kroger, you've got Alcoa, you've got a number of firms here. And as your portfolio size increases, your volatility decreases because the unsystematic risks are averaging out. So what does that mean? That means that systematic risk is what is going to be used to determine the risk of a firm when you're thinking about what is the cost of equity capital and, and what kind of risk premium do I want as an investor for investing in eBay, right? So, but then the question is, how do we measure systematic risk? How do we measure this market risk that could potentially affect eBay? And that's what beta is. Beta is the measure of, of market risk. And so beta, it's a little bit, it can get very complicated. I wanna start simple and get a little more complex then later. So beta is the percentage change in an asset's return, or you can think of a stock's return, as that's what we were just talking about. So an eBay stock return, for example, the percentage change given, given, assuming that you have a 1% change in the market portfolio. So you might be thinking, well, what is the market portfolio? Well, the market portfolio is this theoretical portfolio of, of all firms and asset classes, right? It's basically just all firms together. Now, in reality, a lot of times people use something like the S&P 500 or something, right? But this is more of kind of a theoretical construct, and the way to operationalize it would be to use some kind of market index, right? So basically you're saying, okay, if the S&P 500 or some index or this market portfolio goes up 1% or goes down 1%, what happens to eBay's return? How tied in is eBay's return to general market conditions? Okay, so that's really what beta is telling us. And, and by virtue of doing that, it's telling us how much systematic risk, how much market risk that an asset has, that eBay stock, for example, has, right? And that's all the risk we care about when we're trying to value eBay because, again, if we're going to hold a portfolio of firms, then the firm-specific risk, that unsystematic component, that's going to be averaged out. And so, really, we just want to care about the systematic risk, right? So that's, that's what beta is. And so we're ultimately, with beta, we're getting an idea of the sensitivity of eBay or whatever stocks return to the return of the overall market portfolio, for example, the S&P 500. Now, it can get pretty complex to, to calculate beta, but there are simpler ways to do it. And, and I, don't, I don't want you to get tied in and think this is the only way. I'm just trying to show you something simple. And in future videos, we'll talk about the capital asset pricing model, which is a little more complex and so forth. But, but for right now, let's just do a real simple example of how you might go about calculating beta. So let's say that we have a company called Tom Skydiving. And Tom Skydiving, there could be two things that could happen. The economy could be good or the economy could be bad, right? And let's say if the economy is good, then Tom Skydiving has a return of 30%. If the economy is bad, then Tom Skydiving has a return of negative 50%, right? It's really affected big time if, if there's a problem with the economy. The market portfolio, right? So that theoretical... This, this portfolio of all the firms and all the asset classes, let's say that in a good state of the economy, if the economy is doing well, the market portfolio has a return of 
If the economy is doing bad, however, the market portfolio has a return of negative 10%. Now, using just these percentages here, we can go ahead and we can calculate the beta for Tom skydiving. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm basically going to take the range here. So we'll take 30% minus negative 50%, right? So that's going to be 80%. Let me just, so that'll be, this will be 80%. We're going to have a fraction. And so in the denominator, we're going to have the market return, which would be 22% minus negative 10%, right, which is going to be 32%, okay? So now we've got 80% divided by 32%. So what is that going to come out to? That is going to give us 2.5. I don't know if you can see that there, so let, let me write it here. Let me, so the beta of Tom skydiving is 2.5 okay Tom skydiving so what does that mean that means that given a 1% change in the market portfolio the change that we could expect in Tom skydiving as an investor is a percentage change of 2.5 percent right so how do we interpret that well we could say that Tom skydiving has more systematic risk than the average firm or the average asset class, right? Because the average, just an average firm would just be one. Because if you think about, okay, the, the market goes up 1%, that firm goes up 1%. So you just say, okay, well, the average, the average risk, systematic risk by a firm would be one. And Tom Skydiving is 2.5, right? So for practical purposes what that means is when the market portfolio when the market does portfolio does really well Tom skydiving does even better right but when the mark market portfolio does poorly Tom skydiving does even worse right so it's it's very reactive to what the market portfolios returns are it's very sensitive right we talked about we're measuring betas measuring the sensitivity of of the assets return to the return of the market portfolio it's very sensitive and it makes sense because you look and you see okay when the economy is bad if if the market portfolio it goes down 10 percent but tom skydiving goes down 50 percent right and then when the economy is good the the market portfolio goes up 22 percent but tom skydiving goes up 30 percent right and so that explains why we have this this beta of, of 2.5 now, you could have, conversely, you could have firms that actually have a beta of less than one, right? Where they're not reacting, they're re they actually have less systematic risk than the average firm, all right? And so we're going to talk, I'm going to, in our next video, we'll talk about some different betas of some firms and how you go about it.